Hi, Lilo. Lilo. Donk. Donko. 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 So I really wasn't going to document uh, this whole thing with this aftermarket uh, remote start and alarm system on this Grand Am that I bought. Uh, but it might turn into a pretty interesting situation. Um, but needless to say, let me show you guys what I ended up doing uh, last night. Well, the camera was not rolling. So I ended up tearing out this entire remote start system. I didn't film it because I really wasn't sure how I was going to do it or how all of this was actually, you know, wired into the car. But... Basically, I just ended up cutting a lot of this out. They didn't really seem to cut or separate any of the factory wiring. They did cut into it, and then they would tie in. They tied this into it. So all I had to do was cut off the ends that were tied in. And leave, let it go. I didn't hook everything back up yet. Because there is one thing that I have to do. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to do it until later on tonight, though. And that is going to be... Uh, I have to put the passkey uh, wire back together. That's the only wire that they really cut separated. And they had it wired into, I think, this. I think it was this one. So one of these... They had one of these wired into the passkey. One was going through or from the ignition probably into this box and the other one was going back to the factory and then that led me to think I think I think it's in this I have no idea how these things work I do not like these things this looks like an ignition all this ignition stuff but um black and yellow to BCM that might have been the wire that they had connected coming from the ignition that's probably the security wire that they had here uh, so I'm kind of scared now because I wonder if this box was necessary to use the pass key to start the car because the key that I have is not pass key. It is just a regular copy key. So by eliminating this, I don't even know now if this car is going to run. We might have to reset the pass key or we might actually have to have a dealership reprogram everything. But this is what I had to do last night. There's stuff everywhere. And it started getting dark, so I didn't get to finish it. I had to unplug the PCM, both of these harnesses here, so I gotta put them back together. Uh, because they had wiring kind of going around these other wires and such. So that was a pain. But we had to unplug that, and everything that they cut in or they spliced into is right there. So you can see everything's still taped, but you can kind of see in some spots where I cut the wires. But the factory wiring looks like it's all still there. Like, not cut in half. It's still all spliced together. Um, so, that's where the majority of all of our wiring was. There was a ground here. I just, I cut it off. They had it tied into the steering shaft. So I cut that. And then, uh, 
on the passenger side, you see I got the glove box torn out. They had a wiring, two wires running through this entire console here. And uh, under the glove box over there is the BCM. There were two wires that they had plugged into the very first harness up there for the uh, BCM. Snipped those off. I did wrap some tape around those, so that should be good to go. Like I said, I got to wrap tape around those so none of those other wires touch anything else. And then came the ignition. And they had uh, the pass key, which consisted of this white wire here. There's a black wire and this yellow wire. This is the only wire, like I said, back there at the trunk. They had a thing spliced onto this. It ran to that box. Then another wire came out of the box and went back into the other half of this yellow wire, which is right there. So that appears to be the only wire that was actually cut into and joined by another piece of wire. They didn't touch this white wire. This white wire is at the back on top of the ignition, which is where the pass key uh, sensor is. And it's, yeah, the, this wire looks like it was untouched. Um, the black wire, which is the ground signal somewhere, uh, they, they tied into it, but it, for the most part, is still intact. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this is the signal wire. This is the one that uh, I believe reads the key and ensures that it's the right key to disable the immobilization. If I'm not mistaken, I do have a wiring diagram somewhere in this pile of wiring diagrams. Anti-theft. Um, yes, pass lock, pass lock, pass lock sensor, uh, part of ignition switch. Yeah, black is ground, yellow is data, the white is battery positive. And all of those go straight into the BCM. The black one reads as security sensor low reference. The yellow one is security sensor signal. And battery positive is security supply voltage. Oh, there was one more wire that I had to chase down, and this was a good one. This was an absolute good one. So they had a purple wire running under the steering column, through the floor, like the firewall. And it tied into, you can't see it, but it tied into one of the ignition control module wires for the TAC. So it was a tachometer input. They did the same thing. They just kind of uh, tied into it. So I chopped it off, put some tape around it. That should be good to go. I have not had the battery hooked up yet, obviously, because I still have all these wires exposed. And I did try to at least tie these two wires together uh, because I turned <laughs> I turned all my wiring stuff, or the wiring stuff that I was borrowing from that guy I work with, I already sent it back to work when I did all this uh, stereo stuff here. So I don't have it anymore, but I'm going to need to probably crimp this wire here. There is no room. That wire is absolutely maxed out. You cannot pull that wire any further out. That is what's left in that harness. That's where they cut it and left all of the section of wire out here so but fingers crossed that when this is all connected I can put my key into this ignition and this thing will start without any issues other than the ticking noise but you guys know what I mean so yeah that's where we're at let's where we're at with all of this aftermarket crap. All right, so I started kind of putting some of the stuff back together that I don't think we're gonna need out anymore. The glove box is back in. Put the HVAC controls back in. 
Um, still waiting for the stereo at this point in time, so that's why this cover is still just kind of sitting here on the ground. Um, I taped up the wires that were under here as best as I can. It's a very tight spot, but I don't think any of the bare wires, there really weren't, weren't you know, it wasn't a whole lot of bare showing really. I did notice this though, the PCM, the thing that holds the PCM is broke. I was wondering why this was sitting down so low. This PCM is supposed to be pushed up in a little higher and there's a thing, a tab over there somewhere. Yeah, and back there, that white tab is supposed to hold the front of the PCM and I don't think there's a tab on the back. I think it's broke. So the PCM is basically just sitting real close to the floor. So that's probably going to be something I'm going to look into replacing because I don't like it hanging there. Granted, I think most of this shield here, yeah, that shield I think kind of keeps it, you know, from coming out, but I still don't like it. Hey, so on the topic of this yellow wire, so I'm going to try again to maybe at least get these to twist just enough just to make contact because I really want to know if this thing's going to start uh, without that system in it. Um, the being that this is so short back here, I'm not 100% sure if, I, if I'm going to be able to get it to twist. I tried a little last night, but it kept getting dark and I was getting tired and frustrated with it, so I gave up. Um, but tonight, regardless if I can twist it or not, tonight I'll probably see if I can bring home that crimper and we'll crimp it together like we did this. Um, yeah, I really, really hope that, that that remote system didn't have a specific bypass for this car. Because if it does, then I'm going to... I'm going to have to maybe figure out a way to keep just that aspect of it without putting that entire thing back in. So this, this is going to be interesting. Well, this is the best that I can do for now. I kind of bent the one up in a J. Bent them both into J's and they're just kind of making contact with each other. I can't even twist those together because, for one, I can only get like one hand on them at a time. And trying to twist them with that same hand, all it does is bring the front wire off. But I'm going to try it like this. There's nothing else touching those wires. So we're in the clear there. One thing I've actually learned in the times that I've taken this battery off, or disconnected it, is if I take the Ram Air cowl off, it gives you better room, more room to work with the side post terminals. And that's not that big a deal. you got two pins like this, those push pins. Then you just pull it out from there and from underneath here and that's it. So that really isn't all that bad. Our battery's hooked up. Let's hope that, let's hope that it'll start. If the pass, pass key or pass lock, whatever it's called, if we got a problem, that security light in the corner is probably gonna flash. So I got that touched still. It's not on anything else. It doesn't appear to be, at least nothing metal anyway. There's nothing there that should be shortened out to anything. Okay, security light's still on. I don't think it should be on at this time with the ignition on, maybe, but I don't remember that one usually being on. Uh, well, this isn't good. It's not even flashing. I hear the fuel pump trying to cycle. Nope. Oh, that's great. That's 
That's great. Hey guys, I got it. You can hear the awful tick. It's running. That yellow wire wasn't touching good enough. Oh, whew. boy. So yeah, tonight I'm just gonna have to solder that or crimp it on. As you can see, it's making, it's actually making better contact. I had to rebend the wire. So. Yep. All right. That was a close call. I was kind of nervous with that one. <laughs> so, yeah, if we shut it off, and if I, if I remove that, just have it kind of floating. That's what it's doing, yep. That's what we had the problem with. All right, so, try to get that to touch back on there. I think it is. All right. Awesome. All right, so at least I know now that this is gonna run without that stupid uh, remote system. Everything seems to be tied in. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's it. All right guys, so it's a little bit later in the evening and since it's getting dark out, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, so, I came out here, I properly got my uh, yellow wire for the theft deterrent system hooked up. Car still runs, I'm not gonna turn it on now because I once I hooked it up, I kinda started it, let it run for a few seconds, turned it off, started it, let it run for a few seconds, turned it off, started it, you know, just to make sure that the wire's good. And I think we're good. I did wanna show you something else though. So, when it's dark out and you you have the key in the ignition and you turn it to the on position, obviously all the lights come on. And one thing you're gonna notice is the service vehicle light comes on. Hmm. And I know, I think a lot of people don't really understand the service vehicle light. They think it's the same as the service engine light but it's not they are entirely different lights obviously the service engine light has to do with the engine vehicle emission systems the computer pcm uh you know that kind of stuff service vehicle soon kind of has to do with well in this case the lights so let me show you if we head to the front of the car here Look, we don't have headlights. We have parking lights. Oh, this light needs to be replaced so bad. We have parking lights. I think those would technically be daytime running lights, but we don't have headlights. If we go to the back, we have tail lights. We have the license plate light. And if we hit our hazards, which you know, we just replaced our hazard switch. Whoop, sorry guys. We have hazards. but we don't have headlights. So, that light is coming on to tell me that we have a problem with the automatic headlight circuit. And that could be maybe something to do with the eye that sits there inside the grill. Um, so I wasn't really 100% sure. 
So I had this schematic of the underhood fuse panel because I wanted to see if maybe before I go in the house, if I could maybe try to figure something out about this. And I do notice, I know it's getting kind of dark, but micro relays, number 19 is the auto parking lamp control. Number 20 is the auto headlamp control. 21 is the horn, 22 is for the daytime running lights. So I was looking and all four of these sit in this corner of the fuse block. So basically, if we look at the relay center here, we have 19 here. That's the parking lamp control. Here's our headlamp control, horn, daytime running light. Let's swap them. So I'm going to take the horn out first just because it's kind of easy. Put that off to the side. I'm going to take the daytime running lamp one out too because I still need room. So we'll put that one over here so I don't mix that one up. And here's the one that I think is our culprit. This is the auto headlamp control. And it's hot actually. It is warm. The other ones didn't feel like that. So I'm going to leave that one out. We're going to put that one right here. I'm going to put this one in. This is the one that was for the daytime running lights. I'm going to put that here. No. I'm going to put that one back. I don't know why. We'll just put that one back. I'm going to take the one for the horn. I didn't test the horn. It's obviously dark out now. So I'm just going to leave the horn empty. We'll leave that bad hot relay there. Assuming that that's what it is. So we did some Swaptronics with the relays. Let's see if we have auto headlights. <sighs> Gotta make sure I have the right key. Yeah, all right, here we go. Hey, hey, look at that. We have headlights. And as you can see, the service vehicle soon light should not be back on. So the relay, that's in place for the auto headlamp control circuit is bad, so I have to buy another relay. On the plus side, my horn relay is good. So while I was out here finishing up this wiring stuff, figured I'd document that. But uh, yeah, so the automatic headlights work, the brights work. Now with that bad relay in that spot for the auto headlamps, you can still turn the headlights on with the turn signal stock. So just because you have no automatic headlights does not mean that you have no headlights at all. I don't think they'd be allowed to put a car on the road without something that allows you to control the headlights. See, the headlights are still on as they should be once the key is out of the ignition. They should be going off any second and we should hear that relay shut off when it does. just like that. So now I'm going to take my daytime running lamps back out, put that here. I'm going to take the horn one out, which was used for the relay. It doesn't feel that hot. The other one did. Put that back where it belongs. I'm going to take my garbage relay, put it back here, put the daytime running lamp relay back into its proper spot. And now when we go to turn the ignition on, we should have no lights again. And we should also have the service vehicle soon light pop up. So I just thought that, I, you know, since I came across that this evening, I wanted to document that. Yeah, see, no lights. And the service vehicle soon is back. Um, but see, if you take the turn signal stock and you hit the switch, you still have control of your headlights if that's, you know, the issue. I don't know what other potential problems could be related to the service vehicle soon light. I do always remember, though, that if it's light related, like daytime running lamp or um, 
headlight related, that light will will shine. Actually, if we take that bad relay, hold on, let's try another thing here real quick. Let me take my horn out again because it's the easiest one to get to on the end. <laughs> Alright, so horn there. So if I take this, uh, I'm not sure if I can get this to work right now. Maybe not. I'm assuming if if we take our bad relay, which is hot again, if we take our bad relay and we put it where the daytime running lamps are, then it would only work during the daytime, obviously, so I don't think I really have a way to test it. Unless I use my phone to shine the light onto the sensor to kind of make it think it's daylight. Yeah, let's do this anyway. We're going to do this anyway. So the auto, um, or daytime running lamp. Let's take this one. Throw it where the daytime running lamps go. And we'll take this one. And we're going to put it for the auto. So let's take that. I'm gonna take my phone, my light on my phone. And I'm gonna shine it. The sensor should be right there. So hopefully we could trick that sensor into thinking it's daylight. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Apparently it still knows that it's nighttime. I know the sensor's in there. Darn. Alright, so maybe I can't do this right now. Shut that off. There we go. Okay. So the phone thinks, or the thing thinks that it's uh, daytime, as you can see. We have no lights on at all. So with the bad relay sitting in the spot for the daytime running lamps, if we take our foot, put on the brake, and we put this car into gear, that service vehicle soon light should come on because we have no daytime running lights. There it is. Yep. Cool. I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy with this little experiment. This is fun. And if I take this off and it realizes that it's nighttime, our auto lights should come on at some point. There we go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch everything back to the way that they were. In conclusion, we have a bad relay and we need to get another one. So, like I said, I just thought that that was kind of a cool thing while it was nighttime. Something that I came across while I was out here finishing up that wiring. And uh, I'm glad that it just turned out to be a relay with the, uh, you know, automatic headlights. So this is the good daytime running light. Put that back here. This is the bad one here. We'll put this one back. And my horn. Uh-oh. Oh, up by the windshield. That's it. So, I'm gonna call it a night. Just thought I'd show you guys that. All right guys, so it's the following day. We're gonna end the vlog with this. I ended up finding this used stereo at a junkyard today. Um, and, you know, eventually I think I'm gonna order a new, a brand new unlock stereo. Um, but basically, just for the time being, um, I wanted to get something in there. What we're going to try to do is take the face off of this one very carefully. And we're going to put it on the old assembly that came out of this Grand Am. Um, that way the theft lock should still be um, correctly programmed. Because the chip for that is somewhere on the board inside the stereo. So I do believe I could take the faceplate off and just swap it with uh, the other one. I do not know how well this works. There's a chance that these are probably still burnt out. 
The buttons look a little nicer. They need cleaned up a little bit, but you can see they're not all peeling like mine are. Like all of this is pretty much gone from mine. So just for the time being, it should be fine, I would hope. But yeah, we're going to carefully try to take this face off and put it on the old assembly. And then we'll take it outside, hook it up, and see how well this works or if my stereo wiring is just going to work uh, in general. If you didn't watch that last vlog, it was it was a mess, so we had to correct that. So check that out if you haven't already. This is the tricky part to remember once you have this open. So this is the bottom half of the stereo. I got the cassette player out. It's sitting right here. And here's the wires that go to the faceplate. I unplugged them already. They came out with ease. But look at how they're wrapped. So we need to remember which one of these gets plugged into where. You know, I took a Sharpie and I just put a black mark on the wires that go up on the top half when this is upside down. So these go in there, this goes in there. So now I can untwist them and take the faceplate off and get it into that one. Hey, fun fact, somebody may have had this off before because the two bottom tabs were already broken. So hey, maybe uh, maybe somebody replaced the bulbs in it. I can only hope. I don't know. Success. All right, so the new face is plugged in. All I gotta do is put the cassette player back down, and we're gonna go outside and give it a shot. So the stereo that I got from the junkyard today has a CD in it. I just noticed. I just got done taking all the screws out. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. Tupac! We got a Tupac album. Book two. All eyes on me. Wow, this looks like it's been in there for a while. It is all dirty. <laughs> Alright, so moment of truth. Let's see if this works at all. I gotta plug it in. I'm gonna leave the top off for the time being. power. I don't have to plug this other wire or connector in. I found out this is for like OnStar or something. Uh, or um, satellite radio. Which I'm not going to use. Oh, you guys fell. I'm sorry. I don't see anything lighting up. So there's probably no display on this. Or it doesn't work. One of the two. I did hear the CD drive move. We got our chime. So that's good. All right, so yeah, we got no backlight again. <laughs> I think the knob is no good. I'm probably gonna have to mute you guys every now and then because I don't want flagged for copyright. Uh, I'm kind of bummed out about that, but I kind of figured. So I'm probably gonna end up buying another stereo anyway. Um, let's see if we can get a CD to work with the other drive that I, I had. This thing hasn't been used in so many years. It kind of looks like it's moving slow, so I don't know if it's working. I might have to mute you guys. All right, well, the good news is it is working. I just, you know, wish I could see some stuff. So I think my wiring is proving to be okay. I went and kind of shook it a little bit. Sounds like all the speakers are working. Uh, so I'm going to mess around with this for a little more, and then I'll give you guys my final verdict here in a sec. All right, I just started it up real quick so the battery wasn't going to die, so I'm going to turn it off. Um, so, so far... What I'm gathering from this is um, 
so the stereo is working. Um, I looked in the trunk, you know, I was kind of going around to see if all the speakers were working. Um, there are Sony speakers in the back, so the reason why there's like tape and stuff back there is because somebody took the uh, monsoon speakers out and they put these Sony ones in, which I'm not going to lie, they don't sound bad. Uh, there's definitely a lot of low end and I'm perfectly fine with that. The tweeters up front, you know, kind of balance out the clarity and whatnot, so it actually doesn't sound too bad. However, this speaker down here does not appear to be working. The tweeter in the door is, I'm getting no sound from that one, and you know, I can't really test the channels because I don't have a display to see what's what. So, like I said, you know, the stereo that I bought was 25 bucks. I only used it for the face plate. Chances are I am gonna order a, a brand new stereo, probably not right away, but we're gonna get a new stereo for this thing. And, um, you know, then we'll just pitch this one. So it is going to happen. I'm going to get a new one. That way I'm going to be sure that everything on here is working. The volume knob kind of shorts out. So if you, if you spin it to turn it up, sometimes it goes down and then up. And same thing with the tune knob for the radio stations, which is common. See, I just turned it and I got nothing. But the CD player is working, which is what I expected. So if I get rid of the stereo... Uh, I'm obviously going to keep the CD player because the actual disk drive is not that old. Um, I've had it, when I took it out of my Grand Prix, it was only three years old, so it's still relatively new. It seems to be playing fine. Hopefully the thing with this speaker here isn't anything wrong with the wiring that I just did. Um, what I might end up doing at a later time is tearing that door skin apart. Um, and we will basically disconnect this disconnect that um, oh I forgot there's an amp back in here too there's the monsoon has the amp in the uh, trunk so we might have to test continuity it for some wires um, go into the amp and whatnot maybe the amps bad maybe it's this maybe whatever this is doing isn't work I don't know but it's good enough for now I know see I'm turning it. it's not turning up Oh well. So I know that at least um, the wiring and stuff for the most part seems to be working. Door chime works. S the stereo is playing. Uh, so I'm for the time being going to get all this back together and I'm going to call it done for the stereo chapter at this time. In the meantime, do not forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Also check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. We did do a lot of electrical stuff in this video. Um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, we kind of went through a, a series of uh, different things uh, with the car. I forget what we started off with. I know we did the auto light, the, the auto uh, lights. Uh, oh, the remote start. We got rid of the remote start. So, yeah, at the moment, everything seems to be checking out okay, with the exception of one door speaker. Uh, so, I can't complain about a whole lot yet, but we'll try to get to the end of that. That'll drive me nuts, because I do like to have a good sound system. Um, so, somebody may have changed these speakers out, too, up front. They may not even be the original ones. But, we'll find out in time, I'm sure. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Take care.